talking right. about finance, but with regard to the real economy, we're watching a situation, both, I would say, in Europe and really around the world since the G20 summit in Toronto, where the virtues of austerity <laughs> are being, how do you say, banished about like, like somebody's wearing a medal on their chest. Yeah. Well, th this, this is the idea that uh, if you don't spend, if you don't go into debt, you're better off. But think about, let's say, external debt, Germany, who's the uh, austerity whipmaster in, in, in Europe. Uh, Greece runs big deficits, uh, uh, balance of payments deficits with Germany. Well, that makes German industry profitable and helps Mrs. Merkel run a mm -hmm. profitable Help economy. Help them through the reunification yeah. uh, adjustments right. that they made. Now, what, uh, uh, if you're a seller, you want your buyers to have a lot of income, be rich. Mrs. Merkel, however, who's trying to sell to Greece because that's what their export industries are, are saying, no, you've got to be poor, you've got to stop spending. Mm -hmm. All that's going to do is create problems for her industries. See, So the, the austerity argument is, is a terrible one, in, in certainly in balance of payments things, and it's also the same problem here. Looking at Europe now, you can see something that, uh, how do we say, probably would have haunted Keynes. What, what would you prescribe for Europe? How would you well, suggest Keynes, to Angela Merkel that she okay. lead them out of a run? Kane, Kane, at the end of the Second World War, Keynes presented something at Bretton Woods called the Keynes Plan. Mm -hmm. And what he said was, here was Europe, which was war-torn. They needed imports, and they couldn't sell exports, even if, they, if there was a market for their exports, because they, their productive capacity had been destroyed during the war. So what Keynes had was said, well, there's going to be a country that's going to run export surpluses if, if the Europeans can buy anything. And of course, that was the United States. So he had this plan where the, when there's a balance of payments problem, much of the uh, solution of the problem lays with the export surplus country, the creditor country, solving the problem. And he said the, this, uh, that the U.S. government or the credit of the company, he didn't say U.S. Uh, country. In those days, it was. It was the U.S. Yeah. government. Should provide Europe with about $10 billion to solve the problem over the next three or four years. And Harry Dexter White, the uh, American representative, said absolutely not. Congress wouldn't go for more than $3 billion, And therefore, they introduced the IMF and the World Bank as methods of trying to get money over to Europe. Okay. Well, instead, uh, we had the Marshall Plan. And in four years, we gave them 15 billion, not 12 billion. <laughs> and what was the effect of the Marshall Plan? They were able to buy goods and services and rebuild their productive facilities. And we had a growing export industry. So with nine million men and women coming out of the armed forces after the war, they could find jobs, not only for domestic demand, mm -hmm. but for the export industries. And that was a win-win situation. So what I would tell Mrs. Merkel is, you want to keep your industries going and they need uh, export markets, you have to somehow convince Germans to buy more Greek goods. Worst comes to worst, you, should, you give them the money as a market plan, but why not have them buy more Greek goods? So the problem is, is we still think debt is a debtor problem. And what Keynes said is it's a debtor problem, but it's also the creditor problem. Mm -hmm. And the creditor has the wherewithal to solve the problem. The debtor often does not. Does not. So we've got to put more pressure on the creditor to help solve the problem. And Irving Fisher, in his book, uh, Booms and Depressions, in his famous article, said, when the creditor doesn't take action, look what a mess you create yeah. with these exactly. nominal contracts and deflation, exactly. increasing the burden of debt, the more severe exactly. the downturn becomes. And it, it, it's like dropping a nuclear bomb. Everybody, even a lot of innocents, are going to get killed by it, and we shouldn't allow that to happen. Government spending, huge deficits. Roosevelt in 1936 uh, had some stimulus from 1932. To, uh, the, gross, uh, the debt GDP ratio went up from about 20% to 40%, and everybody said, that's terrible. Uh, no government could have that size GDP uh, debt ratio. And so Roosevelt balanced the budget in, in, for fiscal 1937, cut spending, et cetera. And what happened? Like Nine months of recession <laughs> by the middle or the end of 1937, we were as bad off as we were in 1929. Mm -hmm. 
So then Roosevelt continued, but again, very cautiously. But when the war broke out, then the question is, let's spend whatever the government has to spend. Even during the war, we did not ask people to pay enough taxes to pay for all the war. Right. Yeah, we had debt sometimes was 30, 30 40 percent of GDP. Well, that the GDP the ratio war. at the end of World War II is about 120 percent. Why not? If we lose the war, let Germany worry about paying, for, or the Axis, I should say. Yeah. If we won the war, great. <laughs> you know, and yeah. we came out of the out of the Second World War with a, a, a GDP ra debt ratio 120 percent debt over GDP. I came out of the uh, uh, school. It was easy to get a job. You know. Compared to my parents, etc., life was wonderful. And for next, uh, and th then in the 1950s, even with Republican president, the biggest public works project in the history of the United States occurred: the Interstate Highway Commission, deficit financed. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And here there was a pr productive investment because it made it easier to move goods and services. And so that per se is not bad. I had a debate with Murray Riedenbaum at one time, who was uh, Re Reagan's Council of Economic Advisors, and I said the biggest entitlement program that we ever had before Medicare and Medicaid was the GI Bill mm -hmm. after the Second World War. It was one of the greatest investments we ever made in terms of education. We had all these people coming out who were equivalent of rocket scientists, engineers, and so on and so forth. So why not invest in education? Uh, and if it has to be financed partly by government spending, it's a great productive investment.